Hello, and welcome to Drama After Dark. I'm Andrea Willannon, here as always with Jackie Bruley. Hello. And joining us this week is Ron Bachman, Senior Director of Programming for WGBH. Hello. We're here to talk Season 5, Episode 4 of Poldark. And we're going to get started with Jackie's timed recap of the episode for 30 seconds. Ron, <laughs> are you ready, Jackie? I think I'm ready. <clears throat> I hope it's going to be okay. I'll do my best. All right. Here we go. Ross lies to his spy handler and says that Ned is behaving himself. Foreshadowing? Yeah. Back in Cornwall, Tess is rousing up a rabble, partly because she's a jerk, and partly because mahogany dad Hanson is paying her to get Ned in trouble. With everyone pissed at the closing of George's mine, Tess ropes Ned into a peaceful protest, while Ross tries to solve the problem by buying the mine without asking Demelza. Caroline gets jealous of Kitty, Cecily friendzones Jeffrey Charles only to realize that she loves him later, and Dwight treats George's mental illness. The protesters break into trend with, but Ross saves the day by convincing George to reopen the mine, and Demelza finally fires Shady Maid Tess. Ooh. Right on the money. <laughs> yeah, yes. I did it. That's so good. Okay, fabulous nice. recap, Jackie. Boom. That's always nice when you get it all in. It is. <laughs> you did a great job. Um, much better than last time, and much better wow. than me last week, wow. to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple rough weeks, but we're okay. getting there. We're there. Yeah. We're there. You didn't mention, however, my favorite moment of this episode. That's true which was Morwenna reuniting with John Conan, the barbarian, as I like to call him, <laughs> um, which was, I thought, a really sweet moment because even though she doesn't tear down John Conan's grandmother, as I feel most of us would <gasps> so like to see, she very sweetly says to her child, you know, no, I'm not a friend of hers, but I am your friend. And that, that part really got to me. It was very cute. It really was. The only thing that was a little not cute about it is that I couldn't get over how much that child looks exactly like Ozzy. Like, I don't know how they did the casting or if it's like somehow a relative of his, but that small child looked like he was about to be a real jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Very upsetting. Yeah. I think um, my favorite moment, mm -hmm. which was not upsetting, well, it maybe was upsetting for Ross, but it wasn't for me, <laughs> was when he went to the bank to try and um, purchase, like, to, George is mine, mm -hmm. and the banker literally just laughed him out of there. <laughs> He's like, no, Ross, you don't have enough money for this. This is a bad idea. No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And then Ross hands over his list of, here are all of my things that I can put up for to buy the mine. And the banker's like, oh, that's cute, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you have a favorite moment? I did. I, actually, I liked the scene between Ross and Jeffrey Charles, mm. where he's kind of giving him Uncle Lee advice, if mm -hmm. that's a word. Uh, I thought that was really nice. Yeah, it's very, their moments together are very yeah. sweet and have been, I feel, throughout the whole yeah. series, yeah. which was great. Um, and we're curious to know, viewers, what your favorite moment this episode was. But first, I'm going to, while you tweet those in, I'm going to take a look at some of the tweets that we've yeah. already had today. Um, so, starting here, ah, <laughs> from Katie, at Lady Kate on Twitter, do not tell Tess violence is ever necessary. <laughs> Damn it, Ned, you are so bad at being a guest. Hashtag Poldark PBS. Kate, we can't agree more with that one, I feel. Oh my god. You can't do nuance with Shady Maid. You like, can't. She doesn't, she's not capable mm -hmm. of it. She's like, violence? Okay, yeah, I got it. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. The French were thinking the right thing. Let's chop off their heads. Eat the rich. Yeah. And uh, also was from Cat the Great, Kathy B 733 on Twitter. We have, I didn't like Tess before, and she can take a flying leap off a cliff now. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Pull Dark PBS. So Tess is not in anybody's good books this no. week. Nor um, should she be. Nor no. should she be, seriously. <laughs> So let's learn a little bit more about you, Ron, before we head into our okay. next segment. Yeah. So you're the Senior Director of Programming here at WGBH. I am. What exactly does that entail for the viewers at home? Well, it basically means that I'm responsible for deciding what programs air on the various channels oh. that we offer. That's the short answer. There's a much <laughs> longer one that would put everybody to sleep, so we'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And how do you get into that field? That's such a specific and interesting type of job. In my case, it was uh, complete accident, dumb luck, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I just kind of took advantage of a couple of opportunities that came up, but, uh, and this will be horrifying to anybody who's been beating their brains against the walls of WGBH trying to get a job here, but I just kind of fell into it. <laughs> I never set out to work in television, let alone be in programming, and it just kind of happened, and here we are. Do you have to really love watching TV to be a programmer, or is it just something that... I think you do. I mean, part, part of what we do is 
screen programs and make editorial decisions about what we're mm -hmm. going to air. And, and I should say, when I say we, that's not the royal we. I do have a programming colleague, Devin Karambalos, who I work with. So nice. that's what I mean when I say we. <laughs> now, one time you told Andrea and I about a, I can't, not really a conference, but a thing that you do uh, where you go to England and watch all the programming. Yeah, Tell so, us about that. So we do a fair amount of acquisition from the BBC. And every year in Liverpool, in the dead of winter, which <laughs> Liverpool's lovely in February, um, <laughs> uh, they have an international conference. They invite buyers from all over the world, uh, different television systems around the world, to come over and view their wares. And so we spend about three days pretty much doing nothing but watching TV. Oh my god. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of dramas, um, what specifically do you like about Poldark as a show? Well, I'm kind of a sucker for historical dramas anyway, but you know, it's a show that does a wonderful job creating really rich, well-realized characters mm -hmm. and also doing the, um, you know, recreating that period. And of course it looks beautiful. And they give you people to root for and people to hate, like Tess mm -hmm. and George. And, mm -hmm. you know, you get very emotionally invested in it. That's awesome. I obviously agree. Is mm. there a show that, other than Poldark, that you really like that you think people should watch that's a drama or underrated? Sure. I mean, there's a lot because I um, consume dramas the way some people eat potato chips. <laughs> I, I, I'm a drama junkie. Um, so on our own air, I would, if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be Shetland. And, oh. and again, Another show that has really strong characters, a wonderful setting that's almost a character itself, you know, great plots, um, but I really like that show a lot. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Great. Well, now that we know a little bit more about you, we're going to go into the hot take debate this week. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we had two choices, Ron. Um, is Cecily leading Jeffrey Charles on, or is George really cured? Now, which one do you want to tackle this week? Oh, I could go either way, but let's talk about George because everybody loves to hate George. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, why don't you start? How do you feel about George's miraculous recovery? Is this <laughs> it, or is he still on the precipice in some ways? Well, he's probably still on the precipice. I think he's mostly over it. I mean, I think, mm -hmm. you know, stepping back and looking at it from sort of a storytelling point of view, I think it would be a mistake if they had him relapse because mm -hmm. we've s we've had several episodes now of him mm -hmm. you know hallucinating and I think um, they're probably moving beyond that now mm -hmm. um, but you know obviously he's feeling the loss of Elizabeth very deeply mm -hmm. and while I won't go so far as to say that I feel bad for him because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see my aforementioned comment about <laughs> hating George um, you know I, we've kind of been trained to hate George all along so but uh, I think that um, it's added an interesting dimension to him. Mm -hmm. So I think he's probably pretty much on the way to recovery. Mm -hmm. But you may disagree. I actually do disagree because I think they've set George up for so long to be the bad guy of this show that I think it would be very, um, it would sort of be his comeuppance. And mm. I think it would be very mm -hmm. deserved for George to <laughs> see the end of his days um, probably not in a padded room, but at least in the room upstairs. Though we did feel very bad for him last week, as we had discussed on the show last week, um, with some of the Victorian elements uh, that right. surround psychiatric care at this time. You know, we're, George is not the type to be committed to bedlam, at least right. not with his, his money. Right. Right. So it's very likely he would see the end of his days wandering the mansion, pining over Elizabeth, which while sad is sort of something that he deserves at this mm. point, I think. Um, do you have a counterpoint to that? Well, I don't know. You're pretty convincing. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, they, they have sort of set us up to hate George mm -hmm. so much, so you could say that, that, that he, he deserves what's coming to him. Um, I actually think it would be more interesting dramatically if we see him come through that mm -hmm. and, and see whether he changes or not. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's an interesting moment in this episode that suggests that maybe he's still the same old George when he's sort of past mm -hmm. the worst of this mm -hmm. and Dwight is talking to him about marrying Cecily. Mm -hmm. George says, I can't imagine marrying again. And Dwight mm -hmm. says, what about Cecily? And he says, oh, that's a business decision. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the George we all know and hate. That's yeah. true. But that is so, true. So, you know, we'll see if, if he moves beyond that or not. I'd, I don't. I, I don't think I'd buy a full on redemption, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see some 
change there, some evolution, so that you don't feel like he's just been the same character for five seasons. Fair enough. Yeah. It's Fair enough. interesting, because you almost think a redemption for George could work out this season. This is the first time where I feel like we have enough other bad guys true. to make it's up for true. him. Every other season we've needed George to be the heel, and now we have Shady Maid Tess, Ugh. we have Mahogany <laughs> Business Dad, we have the Ernst Stavro Blofeld of the show, we still right. don't know who it is, Hawkman. Hawk right. um, like, we could get away with not having Evil George, but I kind of want Evil George back, because I like him so much. Yeah. I mean, I don't like him, but I like him. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So let's take a look once more at our audience participation um, on Twitter. And we have Twitter and social media, excuse me. Yeah, anywhere. Um, so we do have people tuning in this week. Um, OK, I loved Elizabeth, but I was low key hoping Jeffrey Charles was vis visiting his father's grave there. Does no one else miss Francis? Oh. That's a good point um, a good from point. Caroline at Real Caroline JK. I miss Francis, Caroline. It's true. Frankie, um, <laughs> as we called him, maybe inappropriately. <laughs> Cecily pulls a Pam Beasley, which if you know me, as we know in the office, I am very into the office, sure. not our office, but the show. Not into the uh, our office, Andrea. Another great one from Kate, at Lady Kate, uh, including a tweet from Jim Halpert telling Pam that he's in love with her. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Kate, you get me. Um, Let's see, what else do we have on here? Do we have any about our current decision? Oh, from Precious Heaven 723 bloody hell! <laughs> now George has gone and made me cry. <laughs> but I bet I'll soon regret it. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I we're all in that yeah. same boat of we feel bad for George, but like, yeah. it's coming. He'll yeah, be back. exactly. Um, let's see, do we have any more about George? We don't, but we do have um, a tweet from Miami Sita, not to be confused with Mama Sita. Uh, <laughs> Valentine is just running in these corner streets like some feral child. <laughs> <laughs> Which who doesn't love a feral child, to be really? honest? Yeah. I mean, especially one with such a great little wig. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, let us know if you have any opinions on the George debate. Let us know some more of your favorite moments. And uh, we will come back to that again later in the show. But for now, we're going to move on to our next segment, otherwise known as Woman's Best Friend, a segment dedicated to the dogs of Poldar. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not just talking about Ross. Hey! <laughs> Spicy! <laughs> and fair. Hot takes. Let's be real. <laughs> um, so Horace and Garrick, two of the most awesome characters on this show, to be honest. Some of the best dogs on TV. They both mm -hmm. fill such important roles. You think about, mm -hmm. like, Lassie did a lot of things on mm -hmm. on Lassie's show, right? Mm -hmm. But that show was called Lassie, not I mean, Poldar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, or Timmy. And, yeah, exactly. Matter. Right, and yeah. Garrick is is out here saving the day mm -hmm. in a very real way and getting no recognition for it. It's true. Everyone's like, Demelza, you're so great. You saved yeah. the kids from the fire. How did you know about the fire if not for Garrick? Exactly. That's true. Fun fact about Garrick, he was actually a rescue dog Aww. in England, and his real name is Barley, which I think is possibly the cutest dog's name That's I've ever heard. Name. Oh my god, yeah. isn't it great? Um, and Ron, I know you have a soft spot for Horace the Pug. Well, yes, I do like <laughs> Horace, but you know, Horace's role in this show is kind of interesting because he's sort of part exposition dog mm -hmm. and part therapy or therapist. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely. know, because basically he exists for Caroline to unload mm -hmm. on, but um, he seems to take it with equanimity so you he know does. I admire him. Great aplomb um, that, yes. that, that yeah. pupper. Um, you know t today I think honestly if Caroline if Caroline existed in 2019 Horace the pug would be a comfort dog on the plane with her. Yes. Oh my god. Um, totally. But she'd so be very cute. generous I think like if I was on the plane with her she would happily hand me Horace to comfort me in my time of need. I think she would do that yeah. 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 I mean, the way that she would do it too is that she would say Horace, do you think we should comfort that lady? She seems very nervous. <laughs> yes. And then Horace would be like, <laughs> and then she would hand you the dog. <laughs> Whether Horace wanted it or not. That's yeah, right. and Dwight's yeah. in the corner like, oh my god. <laughs> this is why we cruise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have Horace and Garrick, two great people, and I think throughout the series we've seen them really, really shine as an exposition character, as an exposition character in Horace's case, and then very much like Lassie in Garrick's right. case. Yeah. And I think it's one of the things I really like about this that actually I mentioned to you earlier this week, Jackie, is 
in a lot of shows and even in, in our culture, you hear man's best friend. Mm -hmm. And in this case, all the dogs we have on the show, all the animals that are truly treated as like something that moves the story along mm -hmm. or helps explain parts of the story are the dogs of women, specifically Demelza right. and Caroline, which I think is nice. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. nice, you know, a lot about this show has a social justice element or an early feminist element, and this is just another example of that, of the dogs being the ones that are close to their mistresses and not necessarily to their masters. Yeah. So. I love that part. Also to a um, <laughs> less serious point, I just love that Caroline is constantly carrying around that heavy dog. Yeah. I just would, I, that's probably a good workout plan for Yeah, she her. probably has great forearms, yeah. to be honest. I bet, like, just one really strong arm, and it's yes. her horse carrying arm. Yes. <laughs> she lifts weights to practice yeah. on the weekends. Probably has to. Um, and speaking of some of our favorite characters, we did take a quiz earlier this week, yes, all we of did. us. Yes, we did. Um, Masterpiece right now has a great quiz on their website for, um, which Poldark character are you? For and this season. For this season specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alas, to all of our detriment, Horace was not anybody <laughs> that we got. Sadly. Very sadly. But we did get some pretty great characters. We did. And I think the interesting part is that all of us, I think, expected mm -hmm. to get a different character than we got. Yeah. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Which is sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have a double up. Yes, we do. So, Jackie, if you would start with the character you thought you were going to get. Yes. And then the character you did get. So I thought that I might get Caroline because I answered stuff um, with the idea of being perhaps a little bit impetuous and uh, impetuous at times, mm -hmm. but also like being a bit of a nerd, which I think is what Caroline's thing mm -hmm. is. Like she, she likes to learn things, but she also likes to meddle. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's accurate to my <laughs> personality. When I think Jackie, I think meddling. That's my move. Um, <laughs> sorry, that was probably really creepy right at the camera there. Um, but I, I I was very surprised when I did not get Caroline, but instead I got Dwight, which I was pretty happy about because mm -hmm. I like Dwight yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the funniest part, though, is that the Dwight description is so like, you're the sweetest person in the world, you're so nice, you take care of people, which I'm very snarky in the office. So when I said that, our colleagues all laughed which I thought was rude <laughs> and mean, but I'll get over it someday. 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 I thought it made sense because you have a background in medicine and public medicine, That's and so fair. it made totally sense for you, total, total sense for you to get Dwight to me. I didn't think about mm -hmm. that, but that makes sense actually, mm -hmm. yeah. Now Ron, who did you think you were going to get and who did you get? Well, I, uh, to the extent that I thought about it deeply, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it was, uh, I, the character in the show I feel the most affinity with is actually Dwight. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, he's a likable guy. He's a, mm -hmm. People gravitate toward him. Um, so I kind of expected that, mm -hmm. I suppose. So I'm somewhat embarrassed to say that I ended up with Ross <laughs> because Goodness. I don't see myself that way at all, but <laughs> apparently the quiz did. So yeah. who might argue? I do love the idea of you just like herring off across the office to, to deal with some problem or another, um, like upstairs galloping mm -hmm. on a horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't do horses, but I, I drive a mean office chair. There it is. Mm -hmm. so you heard it here first, yeah. folks. <laughs> <laughs> and you did actually have an interesting run-in with somebody who suggested you might get Ross, actually. Yeah, I had a, there's a friend, colleague here, who I mentioned I was going to be taking the quiz before I took it, and mm -hmm. he said, oh, you're totally Ross. And I was like, no. So when I did it and turned up as Ross, I, uh, mm -hmm. I emailed him and said, you were right, to which he responded, I've known you for 20 years. I think I know <laughs> how you are. So... So for me, myself, I thought I was honestly going to get Demelza or Caroline also because uh, I'm a little tempered sometimes, <laughs> a little fiery, spicy Latina blood. I could see you getting <laughs> Demelza. That would have made sense That would have made yeah. sense, but I too got Ross, actually. Um, part of the difficulty with me getting Ross is that when we were doing this, I asked my colleagues, what is a personality trait of mine that most sticks out to you? And then I read them the list in the quiz and they all went, oh, reckless, 100%. <laughs> and I do not see myself as a reckless person. <laughs> so that was interesting, but I do see myself as a hero, so it makes sense, there you totally. Go. There it is, silver <laughs> lining. You both have long hair, too. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, I can definitely see myself galloping <laughs> across the moors with my hair flowing yeah, behind totally. me. Needs to get a little curlier first, but we'll be good to we'll go. Work on it. We could get you a perm. <laughs> That would be fun. Oh, there we go. Yeah, permanent tricorn hat. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on Drama After Dark, Andrea gets a perm. <laughs> I'd be, I would tune in for that, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> So I believe you had a recommendation for us, Jackie. Yes. In our next um, segment. If you like this, 
I have to say it that way. Now, it, now it's a pattern that we have yeah. to keep doing. Okay. Um, so my recommendation tonight, and I'm actually surprised that this is the first time we're recommending this this season, yeah. um, is Les Miserables from Masterpiece. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm recommending it is obviously that um, there is a lot of French Revolution reference going Absolutely. on, in particular tonight with everyone talking to Ned about what he's learned from the revolutionaries and that really great moment where he does the kind of dumb thing of saying, oh yeah, sometimes you gotta get violent to get stuff done <laughs> to the most dangerous rabble rouser in the town. Um, and in a t on top of that, Les Miserables, like all of the Masterpiece productions that we love, has you know gorgeous sets, wonderful costumes, mm -hmm. the acting is superb. Um, it's not a musical, uh, which I like. I feel like I always have to say when we talk about the show. Mm. It's a feature, not a bug for me, but yeah, I just made different. <laughs> I think yeah. for most people that yeah. we've talked to, that that's been the exact yeah. response. I of course I love the musical, so I would have liked that. But it's mm -hmm. kind of nice to have um, something more in line with the book, in that mm -hmm. there are no weird song breaks. Right. So yeah. um, that's our recommendation this week from Andrea and I. Mm -hmm. So, going into our next ranking of the day, um, I had to pull up my notebook for this one because we need to remember. Um, and it's hard for me to keep all these amazing moments in, our mi in my mind. Um, so this week we're talking about the top five shady moments on <laughs> Paul Dark. <laughs> and at number five, we have Ross sassing uh, Hansen, AKA Mahogany Man, yeah. in their carriage on the way to Cornwall from London. Um, I thought this was a pretty great moment, to be honest. It was such a nice return to the um, early days of Ross when he just mm -hmm. can't kind of keep it together and just loves to be kind of inappropriate with people that mm -hmm. he, should be fighting with, he shouldn't be fighting with. He's like, hey, uh, you don't need slaves. You could just pay your workers well. And then does that, that grin that he does that <laughs> yeah. we all know and love. Yeah. It, it was a pretty great Ross moment that I do miss from early days, too, because as you're saying, in early times, he used to be running around town not actually doing government stuff and just being like, hey, guess what? I'm better than you. <laughs> so Maybe uh, Ned has actually been good for him Maybe in that you've got this totally bonkers friend now, so yeah. you've got to tone it down. Yeah, yeah. Maybe true. that's part of it. I don't know. It is true. Um, number four is that we've <laughs> just seen Demelza eliminating Tess in a reality show-esque fashion. Um, <sighs> I love this moment so much. <laughs> I, it's not a secret to anyone who knows me that I love reality television because I think it's like hilarious high drama. And the combination of Demelza doing the reveal of being hidden in the house and then saying, pack your things and go like she's running mm -hmm. uh, Top Chef mm -hmm. and Tess, <laughs> Tess saying, you haven't seen the last of me. It was just perfect. It was right out of uh, America's Next Top Model. I loved every second of it. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty good moment, I think. Um, but. Probably not as kind of heartbreakingly shady as Cecily making fun of Jeffrey Charles at the wishing well down on the oh, beach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, Cecily just does not know how to behave sometimes, let's be <laughs> honest. Jeffrey Charles is like, this beautiful wishing well, it's very important to my childhood. And Cecily's like, that's cool, I just want some cake. Bye. <laughs> um, but then we also have number two <laughs> on, our, on our ranking list, which is Tess starts a riot. I think in yeah. terms of like comparative yeah. shadiness, this is probably the, the one of the worst things, but I mean. And not only does she start the riot, but then when it's diffused, she kind of tries to keep it going. And she doesn't want to give up. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. keeps going like, but we still want money. Right, yeah. And they're like, we'll get you money, but we want it now. <laughs> right. And everybody's like, let's just go home, Tess. And Tess is standing outside with her like the one picket sign, like, I'm <laughs> not satisfied. I can't figure out if it's because she, hates Demelza so much and wants to mm -hmm. sort of keep fighting that fight, mm -hmm. or if it's that she genuinely thinks that this is a good cause, or if mm -hmm. it's that she wants the money from Mahogany Dad, like, I really can't figure her out. Her motivation, mm -hmm. it just seems to be to be a force of chaos and destruction. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely feel she's like a chaotic neutral or chaotic evil on this show, if we're doing D&D &D rankings. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Alignments are definitely where it's at. Yeah, and then our number one top shady moment is, uh, of course, from George. Of course. <laughs> Gotta be. Possibly healed George, uh, dismissing Ross as soon as Ross saves his life. Yeah. Being like, I was going to do that all along. <laughs> <laughs> that felt like a nice re return to form as well. Mm -hmm. and it was nice that that happened at the end of the episodes. We had the Ross of, of old in the first episode, then we have 
at the very mm -hmm. beginning and then the George of old at the very end. A nice mm -hmm. bookmarks, bookends for us there, mm -hmm. I thought. Well, there was a nice parallel too there between George sort of trying to, in the moment, realize he can take credit for something that Ross has just done. Mm -hmm. And then that moment at the end where Tess is surprised by DeMels and tries to make it look like, oh, this drink was for you. Yeah. I knew you were there all along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you agree with our, our ranking, Ron? I think so. Yeah. Would you switch so. any of them? No. No? No, I think you've got them in the right order. All right. Did we miss yeah. any shady moments from oh. this week? Oh. Not that I can think of. I mean, everybody on this show is pretty snarky, yeah, which true. is great. It really are. It is great. The yeah. only one we might have missed was when um, Cecily goes to talk to Demelza mm -hmm. to ask about whether or not she should marry Jeffrey Charles. Oh, yeah. And her question is, um, you know, and a cage is a cage no matter what it is, which is such a dark way to think about marriage, although appropriate for her station and her mm -hmm. agents. I get why she feels that way. But then when she just says, Demelza, you married for love, right? When did you realize that was a mistake? Yeah, that true. was kind of a burn. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but in true Demelza fashion, she claps back with like, it wasn't a mistake. What are you talking about? I married Ross. Right. Which, which, yeah. That, that's an argument winner right yeah. there. <laughs> Demelza relies on that a little too often for argument winner. Really, really. Though Tess doesn't seem to be arguing with her despite everything else Tess argues with her about. True. <laughs> that was another good moment of like kind of a fun aggression on the show was tonight when Ross said mm -hmm. to Tess, like pulls her aside to say mm -hmm. like, hey, I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Stop being a jerk. Like I'm watching mm -hmm. you and we will fire you if mm -hmm. we have to. Mm -hmm. Like Absolutely. Yeah. So those were our top five moments. We want to see if you guys have any. Get at us on Facebook or Twitter and we will reply in the comments on that to see if yours are actually better than ours or anything like that. Definitely, yeah. yeah. In the meantime, speaking of that, let's oh, look yeah. at what our final comments for the day are. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> we have a great one from Marie, at Handbag Baby, which is also oh, a great oh, Twitter great name. Twitter <laughs> handle. <laughs> um, is, why is no one watching this child? Question mark, exclamation point. <laughs> Hashtag Poldark PBS and a GIF of The Rock saying, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great GIF choice, Marie. Um, and then we have from Ragnarok09, oh, so we're manufacturing a revolt now? Question mark. Again, exclamation point. <laughs> Good point. Um, and then we have a few questions, actually, from Nicole Johnson at Buffalonian83. One, how is Cecily getting around sans chaperone? Which is a great question. It is a great a question. Good question. Yeah. She had that woman was glued to her side when we yeah. were in London. I wonder if they just think, oh, we're in Cornwall. Can't get in trouble. Which TBH, I mean, she's wandering around down to like weird caves with wishing wells with Jeffrey Charles. I wouldn't trust that. You can go yeah. to the beach. Yeah. She could have a Victoria <laughs> moment and have trouble swimming. Remember when she got in the bathing oh carriage and had trouble? <laughs> Number two, it took forever to get to places back then. Why does everyone spend 30 seconds talking and get up to leave? For real? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole, <laughs> for keeping it real Reality for check, us. Yeah. Yeah, Reality check, yeah. Reality check. I actually, because as we've talked about in previous weeks, my obsession with going to Cornwall after watching this show, not for Aiden Turner, for The View. Yeah, not for Aiden <laughs> Turner. Sure, Andrea. Oh, yeah. you're, you're tricking everyone out there in TV land. But you actually take an overnight train from London to Cornwall. So oh, nice. them taking a carriage that's a 30-second journey, as Nicole pointed out, not terribly realistic, but it does make for the snappy quips, as we saw with Ross and sure. Hanson. Um, all right, let's see what else we have. Oh my God, it's so much funnier to think about that scene now. If you imagine that happened when they first started that carriage ride and then had to sit for 10 more hours in the <laughs> silence of that <laughs> awkward fight, that's so much funnier. To, well, my workers get paid. So, uh, where are you guys going for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, we do have a George comment from Harrits at I am Harrits. Uh, is George fixed, healed completely? So. Somebody for my side, yeah, I guess, on yeah, that one. So. <laughs> We're going to have to see. Um, and from Debbie Blackman, Debbie, at Debbie Blackma 14, at Poldark, oh, Ned, annoyed us beyond belief, then broke our hearts. Hashtag Poldark. That's, that's pretty intense for Ned in this episode. We all know he's a hothead. Um, I don't feel like I was heartbroken necessarily, but I get it, Debbie. I can yeah. see he kind of did cluelessly betray Ross. Yeah. Bless him. He's doing his best, but his best is not great yeah. right now. Oh, and another great one from I Am Harrits, actually. 
Um, finally, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split your t- <laughs> 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 Pardon me, that was a little more vulgar than I realized. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag pull dark. Uh, so, I Am Harris is on fire this week. I love it. Uh, we have some folks um, agreeing with me on George. And overall, we have, we have some really good interaction this week. I love it. Um, so I think that's it for us yeah. for this week. Thank you all for joining us so much. We're going to be back next week with, a, with another very special guest. Um, and if you want more drama from WGBH, please join the WGBH Drama Club on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, it's please. a delightful group. We have a lot of fun. Um, also, you can sign up for our newsletter list on the website. You'll get great emails with all of the best recommendations, some from Ron every month, which is great. Um, and yeah, come at us with your poll dark pull dorky comments even, if you will, um, on Facebook, on Twitter, wherever your social media is sold. And uh, we'll be back next week. Goodbye. So I have to say that I am here.